A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala khatamil anbiya'i wal mursalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah we are gathered here together alhamdulillah another year for all of us to reflect upon our well our relationship with Allah is it true right um about how grateful we should be to Allah right that we are still alive we are still able to prepare ourselves to um to fa- before we face Allah when we know that many people have already passed away yeah before us yeah, i myself know i think about at least two three people who died because of covid um and i know a few one or two of my students when i'm not not think about immediately before this but a few people who died in their sleep when they are still where they were supposed to be healthy right um so in a sense that our date of death only allah knows right but we must not deceive ourselves to think that we will live until our grandfather's age who is maybe about um 90 100 right we must we, we must not think that we are we have a lot of time in order to face allah right because for all we know we only have one more day we might have one more week we have one more month and this is other things that we do need to understand that every single day that we We, that has passed is a, a day closer to our date of death and we must understand that once the death comes something that we, we, we it is a fact of life all of us must be um, called up to face Allah one day right and when this time comes yeah and that an angel of death come the angel of death comes there's something that we do need to really be prepared yeah if you are not prepared then we must ask ourselves why all right we always have so much time to criticize others right or oh, this person this sister is like this this brother is like this but what about ourselves what about the man in the mirror whom you are looking at every day right how is our how are we in terms of our preparations to face the day of judgment right so all these kind of things that we do need to um address ourselves because if we don't ask ourselves how is our preparations nobody is going to be there for us isn't it true right we have to be accountable for our own deeds inshallah right so as i addressed the brothers yesterday right um don't have all because this is 2022 this is new year i have this new resolution to do this this as well new re- resolutions or any re- comes on re- re- resolutions in order to improve ourselves must come on a perhaps daily basis in it or not just because it's a new year right so maybe do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue yeah to to guide us and to make us among those whom he is pleased with at all times yeah so today's topic has been chosen by brother ayman alhamdulillah yeah on the topic of dua how to make it more effective so how how do we define dua ayman um i think a, a pretty basic meaning is when you ask allah for something yeah so any but anything I, i'm sure i'm sure you can go more in depth but I, I yeah but let, let, let's go that with what we understand is intro which is quite straightforward isn't it true right okay. anything that we ask from allah is a form of dua isn't it true whether yeah. it's of this dunya or whether of the hereafter right it's a form of dua right because yeah. alhamdulillah we understand that it is allah who is able to grant us anything not our employer not our mother not our father it's all from allah and this is very important right um yeah. so Um I just give an example so for example in surah number 40 right in verse number 60 right 40 verse number 60 yep if hopefully this is correct yeah where Allah informed us um wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannam dakhirin and your lord said invoke me Right, that means make dua to me, ask of me, um, and I will respond to your invocation. Verily, those who scorn my worship, that means those who do not ask me of anything, right, they will surely enter hell in humiliation. Very straightforward, isn't it true, right? Something that Allah informed you and I, right, to ask Allah. And this is important, brothers, because a lot of people think that we are the one who make things happen, isn't it true, right? 
we are the one, well, the money in our bank account is from my hard work. I'm the one who work from 9 to 7 in the evening. I work so hard. Sometimes I miss Sundays and Saturdays in order to work. And this is my money. It's, it's completely untrue, isn't it true? If we understood completely, yeah, we discussed before so many times, what is Tawheed? Yeah, Tawheed ar right? Remember as a revision, what is what is Tawheed ar means? Oneness of? Lordship. Lordship. And what does what does what does Rob means? Is Lord in English, but I don't know. Well, oh, maintain a sustainer, the one who provides. Yeah, it's, it's more important yeah. that we understand, isn't it true? Yeah. It's the one who provides, the one who creates, the one who sustains, the one who guides, the one who uh, protects, right? That the, the rain falls not because of it. there's clouds, the clouds also because of Allah, right? It's, it's, you can see in London, right? There's so much so much clouds, but sometimes it doesn't rain for days, isn't it true, right? Because it's from our Rob. Right, the trees are bare now without any leaves. And I mean, when I first came to UK, right, um, I was quite well. For me, it's a huge thing because I live in Singapore. We have only two seasons: um, rain and sun. That's it. Right? There's no uh, spring, summer, autumn, and all this. So, to for me to see a tree standing with no leaves is something beyond our well from my side of the world understanding that that a tree needs leaves for photosynthesis to 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 be living isn't it true but allah is able to make all these trees still alive even though there's no leaves right is is beyond belief for people like me to see this tree and when i look at this and i feel subhanallah very humble because this is allah as our rob created right and this is very important that we discuss so many times that all of us all of us have made a covenant with Allah. Isn't it true? Which surah was this? Ayman? Uh, I couldn't tell you. What do you mean? We discussed many times, isn't it true? At least 10 times. Sir? Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. But, um, right. you know, sometimes... Because this has got to do with Rububiyah, isn't it true? Tahir al right? When, when Allah swapped the back of Adam alayhi salam, right? Mm -hmm. And then Allah spoke to all of us, you and me, whether we, we believe or not, we understand that the Quran is something that is, well, as part of our um, articles of faith, right? Our, our record, Rukun Iman, right? That we do need yep. to believe in everything the Quran. So when Allah said this, it did happen. It, there's no way that we can deny this. And this part of how we understand about the word uh, Siddiqun, right? Siddiqun means the one who is on the truth. This is the truth. Any one of us deny this, then it makes us what? Um, a disbelievers, dis dis firstly. Secondly, yeah. and make, make us Liar. arrogant. Arrogant, isn't it true? And we know that person with yeah. single arrogance cannot enter Jannah. We discussed yesterday, mm -hmm. right in our class. So in this verse, in Surah number 7, verse number? I don't know that Surah. 172, right? Nice. <laughs> when Allah asked us in the in the translation, am I not your Rob? I hate to use the word Lord because Lord is so... Um, Diluted. Is it true, right? Yeah. Am I not your Rob? And we said, yes. We testify that you are. And this is our covenant with Allah. So Allah literally saying to us, am I not the one who will provide for you, to maintain for you, you will... You who will guide you, who will protect you, and we say yes. And yet, you can see people going to the graves, right, to ask from the deceased. We see people like my, my own culture, right, in front of the house. We, they put the word Bismillahirrahmanirrahim to protect the house. In the house, they put Ayatul Kursi. This is completely nonsense, because we did, we did have this covenant with Allah. Yes. Allah, you will be the one to protect us because well, because you are our Rob, and this is Arabubia, and it's so important that we understand this. And because if if you know this, brothers, you will not miss a single prayer because you are scared that your boss is not going to uh, your boss is going to be angry with you. Isn't it true? Because you know that the one who provides you with the money at the end of the bank at the, at the month is from in your bank account is not your employer. Not your HSBC, not your Lloyds, but it is our Rob. And therefore, it doesn't make sense for, oh, I'm so, I'm so nervous. 
I'm going to for this interview. Well, at the end of the day, our Rob will provide. If this job is not good for you in terms of your dean, you won't get the job. Isn't it true? That's part of your istikhara, isn't it true? When you want to get for any jobs, you do istikhara, right? Because you know Allah is the one who's going to, inshallah, with his will, um, protect you from anything that will lead us away from Allah, from him. That's why you make this istikhara prayer, right? Uh, that, a prayer to ask Allah for counseling, right? In the in the istikhara, I'm sure you have read this istikhara dua before. It's so powerful. It's so, uh, for me personally, it's so um, amazing how we invoke Allah sincerely. Isn't it true? If this is, is good for me and for this world in the hereafter, we ask Allah to um, make it easy for us. If it's supposed to be bad for our deen, right? Make it away from us. And this is how, how it is. So, um, and we have, because Allah want us in the same verse, right? Number seven, number seven, 172. Allah want us, make sure you remember this. You cannot say on the day of judgment, you were not made to be unaware of this. Right? And this is how we keep on reminding. I'm not saying this every time because I've got nothing to say, but it's very important to remind I myself when I say this, I remind myself. Because obviously I also have all my own, my own personal problems, right? Things that we face. At the end of the day, when we know Allah is our rock, and, and again, knowing Tawheed is so powerful because you will be, you will not be a slave of this life. Isn't it true? Nothing happens without our Rob's will. Isn't it true? Nothing can happen. And the thing that he happens also with his will. And this is, when you know this, then you say, okay, I didn't get this job, alhamdulillah. I don't get what I want, alhamdulillah. So again, when we make dua, brothers, and we don't, it's not answered, doesn't mean that Allah doesn't love you. Does it mean that Allah thinks that you are such a horrible Muslim? No, I won't grant you, right? It may mean something else. In the, remember the story in Surah Al-Kahf, Surah number, number 18, yeah? About two people, right? One person was given everything, right? Um, um, the crops, the vegetations, the rivers, right? Everything he has. The other person was given nothing at all. And you, you would think that mm, Allah did not love that person who was who Allah give, did not give anything. Isn't it true? But on the other hand, on the contrary, on the basis that Allah loves that person so much that Allah did not give him what he did. I'm sure nobody, brothers, you and I, we never, we always want to have risk or provisions from Allah. So nobody wants to be poor, of course, right? We want Allah increase my risk, right? Make me because when we have money, alhamdulillah, we 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 uh, should be inshallah more grateful to Allah. We are able to save money for Hajj. We have, can support our parents, support our children, support our wife. Of course, money is important, right? So when um, in this example, Surah number eighteen, Surah Al Kaf, when Allah did not give the poor person something, right? Because Allah knew exactly. Perhaps if Allah gave him everything, he would be ungrateful to Allah. Isn't it true? So never, never think that, oh, I, I didn't get what I want, perhaps because um, I'm not good enough. Right? Perhaps, and, but Allah knows everything, isn't it true, about the future. Yeah? Um, Which surah is this? Yes, which surah? I know. Uh, what ayah is this? Uh, it's Kursi. Uh, it's and verse number? Uh, I know it's on the, the first page of the Juz, Juz 2. It's 255, isn't it true? Right? Ah, 255. Right? Yes. Ayat al It's so important because, it, again, it's, it's one of the qualities of Allah, one of the ten qualities of Allah in Ayat al -Kursi. We must understand Allah knows everything from before and from uh, beyond today, right? And this is how Allah is Al-Alim. Right? This is the second part of Tawheed, Tawheed al uluhiyah yeah? Allah, Allah's names that we must understand. He's Al-Alim, the All-Knower. He is Al-Khabir, the all and all this we, we talk about so many times, right? So coming back to these examples um, of Al-Kaf, right? We must understand, right, that Allah would be the final determinant of everything. Can you imagine if you were to meet, for example, if you, if you live in the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, right? And you met him in prison. Your idea or your our prejudgments, oh, he's in prison, it's horrible, right? But subhanAllah, but Allah loves him so much 
that Allah is actually protecting him from? From who? Who did Allah protect Yusuf alayhi salam from? That he became he became prison. Wasn't it the the not the king? Was it the powerful guy's wife? I the uh... Yeah, from from the from the wife of his, the master, isn't it true? Yeah. Because yeah, like yeah. it or not, men is men will be men, right? Uh, succumb to temptations, right? Even Yusuf alayhi salam himself, he admitted, well, you know, um, because the wife is actually very beautiful, right? Um, but Allah was actually protecting him from committing zina, right? Because like it or not, yeah, all of us must understand. For example, Allah says in Surah number seventeen, verse number thirty-two, "Wala taqrabu zina." Yeah, do not come near zina. Not, not even not do not do zina. Do not come near zina. There's no such thing as girlfriends and boyfriends in Islam, right? So all this has been laid down in the Quran, right? So imagine if you were to meet Yusuf Farai Salam in prison. Well, your impression is not good, isn't it? True, because somebody's in prison. But perhaps, right? On the basis of other things, Allah will love him more than you and me, right? Allah put, uh, protected him actually, right? So, and obviously, nobody wants to be in prison. Obviously, Musa, uh, uh, Yusuf Al-Salam was making dua to Allah, isn't it true, right? To um, to have uh, the ability, right? To be to be free, right? To have what he wants in his life, right? Another example, of course, in Surah Al-Kaf, right? When Al-Khidir killed the boy, if you read the surah in surah number 18, right, in the three stories, right, about Al-Khidir, um, the parents, according to this, uh, what Allah said, the parents were believers. Obviously, if you're a believer, you want, Ya Allah, grant me a pious children, right? Uh, grant me uh, children who will be God-fearing to you. But that child happened to be the one who will not be um God fearing yet who will in, in fact oppress the parents to be perhaps might become disbeliever and the child was killed not because Allah did not love that the the parents because why should not Allah love the parents who were believers right but Allah was actually trying to protect the parents so all um, all these examples in the Quran when when we look at it we have to think right we have to ponder over the verses because look right these people were actually those who were loved by Allah, but Allah did not answer that dua. But some things happen, right? So we talked about, of course, um, famous story of Prophet um, Nuh alayhi salam. Obviously, he make dua, Ya Allah, grant me pious children. Obviously, right? But one of the child happens not to be pious. And the child eventually refused to go on the ark. And instead of that he decided to seek protection at the at the mountains and Allah drowned him and obviously long cut long story short you no know, was quite upset right and Allah addressed it very clearly Allah also was wasn't happy with him and on that basis Nuh alayhi salam uh, was very scared of Allah on the day of judgment that he refused to um, intercede for you and I around the day of judgment so all these interesting stories uh, all I'm trying to say is to to denote or to remind you and me um, yes, you can. We're going to talk about later what, what, how are the things that will make your dua more effective, right? Um, that doesn't doesn't mean that your dua is not answered. That doesn't mean that um, you are not worth in the eyes of Allah. No, right? Of course, we feel depressed. I mean, I make dua to Allah. Ya Allah, grant me good health, grant me afia. In the end, I got COVID. Isn't it true, right? So at the end of the day, we know that when things happen to us. Um, we know that inshallah is to expiate our sins. Yeah, so we do need to have good impressions of Allah because this is where shaitan comes in, right? Because we make dua, we make dua, we make dua, then in the end, nothing happens, right? You want to get a good job, we don't get a good job. And I can say safely for myself, it's nice to relate the stories. For example, when I, I did say, tell to you a few times how um, after I graduated from law school, I did not get a job for two years. I had no job at all. And I was quite depressed, of course, right? Um, I think I and Allah protected me from uh, because I was so sure I was I would because I was a, den, a dental surgeon. I was so sure I can get a job in um, medical negligence, right? I was very confident. Nothing at all. I think I only one interview was refused, and that's it. Make me it. Of course, it shook shook my iman, right? But at the, at the end of the day, after that, then I realized. How subhanAllah Allah was actually protecting me because if I were to in, be involved in medical negligence, right, as a solicitor, what happened? Because it involves riba, 
right? All a personal injury, <clears throat> medical negligence claims are all involved, are interest based. And we discussed before, right? The scholars, uh, even Paramahasalam say, it's not just about the person who, who are uh, um, involved in the interest, person who is writing it, person who is recording our witnesses to this, to this report, will be also among those who are sinful um, in the forms of this riba interest. So little did I realize that after a long time that I, I pondered over it and I realized that, huh, now I know that Allah was actually protecting me. I was making dua, of course, who, who would want to be not without work for two years. But Allah was protecting me from a, a sin that is difficult to, um, to, to extricate myself from this. Right, and alhamdulillah, because of two years, I was able to develop steps to Allah. Right, alhamdulillah, and this is this is it. Right, um, so as an introduction, it's important to for us to understand this. Uh, just to complete about tawhid, right? Tawhid ar rububiyah tawhid uh, as sama sifat, the names and attributes, and last one, tawhid al uluhiyah oneness of um, worship. Right, so this is of course we, it it involves specifically. People like the Christians, right? The Jews who do not believe in oneness of God, right? They are committing shirk, right? You know that this is the worst form of sin, that it will be an unforgivable sin for any one of us to be indulging ourselves in shirk. Where did Allah say this in the Quran? That Allah will not forgive the sins of shirk? Anybody? Which surah? Uh, was it? Um, I know the ayah, but I don't know the surah. It's in Allah la yaghfiru ayn shuraka wa yaghfiru ma duna dali. Okay. But I, I don't know what surah. Is, that's the ayah you're talking about, isn't that correct? Yes. Is that surah that, 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 In surah number four, right? Four nisa. An nisa. Well, the, the two are more similar verses. Surah number four, verse number 48, and another verse 116, right? So let's look at 116, for example, right? 1116, similar verses. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalam ba'ida, right? Um, verily, Allah forgives not or do not forgive setting up partners in worship with him, but he forgives who he will sins other than that, and whosoever sets up partners in worship with Allah has indeed strayed far away. Right, so what it means is that Allah, if if you died in that state of shirk, then that's it. But before you die, you happen to ask Allah for forgiveness, and with His will, Allah will forgive your sins, right? And you'll be forgiven, inshallah, right? So it's quite important to understand this, right? So let let's come back to this topic of how to make our du'a more effective, right? So do you understand what I was trying to do, right? Trying to introduce to the topic. Um, because a lot of times when Allah do not answer our du'a, of course, we feel so depressed as a human being. We think that, uh, you know, I, I, honestly, when I got COVID, I was quite, hmm, I make a lot of du'a, Allah did answer my du'a. But in the end, I know, right? As a believer, we know that it's a win-win situation, isn't it true, right? When Allah tests us, we say Alhamdulillah, right? Because we have our sins uh, removed, inshallah, right? And when Allah gives us what we want, we say Alhamdulillah too, right? Because right, Allah answered our dua, okay? Now, the first thing, of course, right? Um, when we make uh, dua, right? Um, we must understand, right, that the dua is actually, is like, uh, because this is how, I think, was it um, Ibn Al-Qayyim said that dua is like a weapon, right? It's, it's when you have a weapon, I was in the army before, right? Um, I was an instructor, so I know all this, some of these, some of the weapons, the rifles and all this, right? It's not about having a weapon, isn't it true, right? First of all, the weapon itself must be clean, must be useful, isn't it true? If not, it is 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 useless, right? Uh, we cannot work properly, right, with the weapon, and also the user must also be. That means you as a person. So let's say dua is a weapon, right? So the person who make the dua, you also must have, for example, um, ability to know how to use a weapon, right? So what's the point of having this weapon? You don't even know how to, uh, you know, 
uh, use a weapon properly. It won't be effective, right? And of course, the weapon itself must be effective for the the function that you do, right? So it's quite quite a useful analysis to 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 understand this, right? So I can ask myself if I'm always sinful to Allah. If I I'm not praying, for example, how do you expect Allah to answer my dua? Isn't it true? All right? I remember one of my clients, um, I know she's not practicing, she 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 confessed to me and all this, and then she said, Oh, you know, I I asked Allah for so many things, Allah didn't answer me. I mean, I did tell her very bluntly, how can you Allah answer your dua when you're not even it's the simple thing that Allah asked us, which is to pray to Allah, you're not even doing it. Right? How do you expect Allah to answer your dua? Right? And this is something that you do need to ask yourself. It's not, we, we as a human being, so we are always very selfish. We forget how Allah is our Rabb, give us the eyes, the ears, everything in order, inshallah. First of all, of course, to worship Him properly. Secondly, to earn a living. Right? So we never thank Allah, isn't it true? That's what Allah said. Was it in Surah number 14, verse number 34? Wa atta wa tuhsuha innal insana kafar. Right? He gave you all that you ask of him, and if you were to count the blessings of Allah, never will be able to count them. Indeed, mankind is um, a wrongdoer, a disbeliever. Which is true, right? Many of us are quite into ourselves. We forget about who is actually giving us the ability to see, to hear, to write, to, to interact like today, what we're doing now on the internet is everything comes from our Rob, right? So um, make sure we understand this concept that when we have a, a dua, very simple dua, for example, Rabbana, everybody knows this, right? Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa It's a good dua. It's the most common dua that Prophet Muhammad has said. But it depends on how you, how you effective you say, how you are to Allah. It depends on the time, the time of uh, that you say this dua, right? Um, whether you understand the meaning, right? So a lot of things we're going to discuss in interest. So it's quite important topic that we actually must uh, understand. Yeah. So first of all, let's discuss about how Allah will respond to our dua, right? So in general. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith from Imam Ahmad, yeah, that Allah that 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 the supplications are answered in three ways, right? What how would Allah answer our du'a? Anybody knows? Um, either he will answer it like actually answer it, yes. or uh, he will answer it on the day of judgment, or yep, or he will prevent something bad from happening. Yes, so either he will give you what you ask. Secondly, yeah. although the, uh, any, instead of giving it, a harm will be pro prevented. So we are protected from something, right? Yeah. Or it will be preserved for us, which is, for me, is the best one, right? Preserved for us as a reward for the hereafter because of our patience. Isn't it true? Right? Because at the end of the day, what we want is Jannah. Isn't it true? Right? This is all just a dunya, what we want to ask, right? Um, for our, our work, our money, and all this is to 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 improve our lives in this world, right? But to be patient when Allah do not answer our dua is very important, right? So this is important. The three things that we must understand, right? How Allah answered our so, so technically, Allah answered our dua. Whatever things the dua we make, it will be answered in one way or another, inshallah. Okay. Um, we also must understand some of the beautiful names of Allah, right? Um, so, for example, when we dua to Allah, the names of all that, the, the, the names of Allah, for example, is Al Mujib. What does Al Mujib mean? Um, the one who responds. We it. have As Sami, the All Hearer. We just don't talk about Al Alim, the All Knower, Al Khabir, All Aware. Um, so, these are the names of Allah right, we, that we can use right, in order to. Um, Make our dua more effective, isn't it true? Right? Um, one, one of the best ones to use is Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum. Ya Hayu Wa Ya Qayyum. Right? What does Ya Hayu mean? What does Al Hayu mean? The? Does it mean the one who gives life? Ever living. That means 
Okay. You are the one who is uh, always Allah. I'll see. No, he doesn't. Wasn't walam walam yakut uh, walam yadid walam yulad. Right. He wasn't born. I think was he given birth. Right. So he's ever living. Um, ya qayyum means al qayyum. The one who provides, the one who sustains. Right. Um, so all these, this, this too is very important. Right. Um, before we make, we're going to talk about later about etiquette of making dua to make it more effective, inshallah. So, bear in mind the first one is of course, right? We need to all know how well, that that Allah would respond to our dua in one way or another, unless several things happen, right? How are the things that Allah is not going to answer our dua? In the hadith. No sincerity. It's Sorry. No sincerity. No sincerity. Lack of sincerity. Yes. yes, this is this is one of the etiquette. Um, other things include, for example, we know hadith, right? Prophet Muhammad SAW warned all, you and me, right? Either you enjoin good and forbid evil, or Allah will, would punish you. What is the punishment? That you are going to make dua, that your dua will not be answered. Either we do this by interacting and reminding each other about the truth, or Allah will not answer our dua. It's very important to understand this, right? Um, so, so there are things in which uh, we need to understand that Allah may not answer dua because we have not fulfilled certain conditions. Okay. Now, number two, as I said just now, how is our personal relationship with Allah? Right. All of us must know. You cannot hide underneath the uh, your pillow and think that uh, you are so great. Yeah. How, if you are not obeying Allah? How would Allah expect to, how do you expect Allah to answer your dua? Isn't it true? Right? Do I commit sins deliberately? Of course, we are not perfect. But if we happen to commit sins immediately, are we commit asking Allah for forgiveness immediately? We know alhamdulillah with Allah's mercy in the hadith. Even when we commit a sin, right? It will not be recorded by the angels. How many hours? For how many hours? Brothers, how many hours after is certain it, hours? Then okay, the angel record down. That means if you ask forgiveness before that hour pass, inshallah, of course, Allah will not let it record down in the books of um, evil deeds. How many hours? Is it two hours? No, I think six hours. Mm. It's quite a long time, isn't it? True, right? But the thing is this, brothers, ability of you and I to feel guilty to us all for repentance is all from Allah. Isn't it true? Again, it's not from us. Right? Why do you think that, subhanAllah, I, I, was, I always think this, right? About Iblis, right? He was so pious last time. He was so pious. How come Allah did not guide him to repent to Allah? You and I know that he immediately reject Adam alayhi salam. He immediately reject Allah's uh, command to bow down to him immediately without any guilt, without it just and this said thing happens in paradise. It's quite bizarre that it's it's allowed to happen, but Allah can do anything with whom he wills, right? To anybody. And this is how. I mean, for me, it's beyond belief that somebody who, who was so pious, somehow or other did not feel guilty that he did not obey Allah. And this is how it works, right? That is why even though we have been praying, right, we have been submitting to Allah, we have been taught a beautiful dua in the Quran, right? Asking Allah to, to not to deviate us from the truth, after Allah has guided us. Which dua is this? Um, I think it's Rabbana la tuzakul Hello? Yes? Which surah is yeah, this? I think it's Rabbana la tuzakul I'm not sure. Yeah, Rabbana it's Rabbana Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da id hadaitana wahab lana min ladunka rahmah innaka 
Antal Wahab. All right, in Surah number three, um, I think it's number eight, right? Which means our our Rob, right? Um, do not deviate us, deviate us from the truth after you have guided us and grant us your mercy. Surely you are the uh, bestower. Isn't it true? Right? And this is important because Allah is guiding you and me not to be so proud. Yes, I'm praying tahajud. I'm praying five times a day. I'm praying my sunnah. I did my fasting. And it, but until we is our last breath, then we can relax. Isn't it true? Until then, we know that we have our number one enemy. He's always pounding on us. We cannot see them, but they can see us. Always jealous that we are always trying to worship Allah, to be close to Allah, always. And sometimes they are successful, sometimes they are not. Isn't it true? Right? That's what Allah is teaching us is to, to ensure, right, that we ask Allah for His guidance completely. It is not a coincidence, brothers, that Allah is asking us to pray five times a day on several, five different type, uh, times of the day. Um, in order to seek Allah's guidance, right? When we say, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim, right? And this is something that we have to be grateful to Allah. Although, uh, for all you know, right? Like the Christians are so happy, oh, we go to the church once a week. What is once a week, right? As, as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the companions, right? If, if, you're, if you are taking a shower five times a day compared to a person who takes a shower once a week, who is cleaner? Of course, the one who takes a shower five times a day. And this is very important to understand this, right? Um, that our praying to Allah is not for Allah. Allah doesn't need any one of us, isn't it true? It is for ourselves. We are the one who needs Him completely, 100%. Even to move my fingers, even to talk, is everything from Allah, right? And this is how we will recognize Allah as our Rabb, okay? Um, besides the, 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 the things that we need to assess on how our relationship with relationship with Allah is, right? How are we just concerned with the obligatory deeds or should we move forward to voluntary deeds, right? You and I know that in the Hadith Qudsi, right? Allah said, uh, 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 when my servant does the um, obligatory deeds, I will love him. But when he does the voluntary deeds, I love him even more that I will uh, be, become the eyes that he sees, ears that he hears, and the hands and the feet that he uses. That means literally, we are guided by Allah, inshallah, right? Because we do not need to do these deeds, but because we want to, to we understand what Allah said in the Quran, about obeying and following Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, right? And we want to move even further to gain Allah's love, right? Because when we read, for example, brothers, right? If you read surah, okay, I'm going to ask you this question, right? And you need to Tell me what you think about this, right? In surah number three, for example, in verse number 31, right? When Allah said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Say, yeah, say, O Muhammad, to mankind. If you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. And Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. Remember, we talked before when you read the Quran, make sure you ponder over verses and you act, inshallah, upon it, right? What is your opinion when you read this? Anybody? I repeat again. Say, so this is what Prophet Muhammad is ordered to tell you and me, right? If you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. So what must we do? Do as the Prophet did. Precisely. If you want to gain Allah's love, you need to follow Him. It's true, inshallah, sallallahu alayhi wa as best as we can. You have to remember in those early days of Islam, in the times of Sahaba, they were cling on to the Sunnah because it is the Sunnah. They will hold on to it. Even, was it Umar ibn Khattab ibn Anhu? He was, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would, He's a black stone. So Umar ibn Khattab, he would tell the black stone, you are just a black stone, right? If I, did, if I didn't see the Prophet kiss you, I wouldn't kiss you at all. And this is, shows how that they they follow him exactly what he did. Humbly because they, they saw him and they were they met him and all this, right? Um, but you and I, we are so reluctant to do the sunnah because it's, a, it's just a sunnah, right? That means it's just something that 
If we do, we get the reward, alhamdulillah. If we don't do, we are not sinning. So then we don't do. And this is how the difference between the Sahaba and us, right? Um, but alhamdulillah, brothers, don't worry, right? We know Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Sahaba, right? Because even though we have not seen him, alhamdulillah, he, he longed to meet us, you and me, right? What did he say? We discussed many times, right? He said to the Sahaba, I long to meet my beloved. And I long to meet my, my beloved. So the Sahaba was quite surprised. Oh, and you want to meet your beloved, but aren't you your beloved? No. Your beloved, my beloved are those who will come after you. They have not seen me before, but they believe in me. And we make du'a among these people, right? Because when we, we believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we try to follow as best as we can, right? So these are the things in which we hope to do these voluntary deeds, right? And and we, we want to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as much as we can, right? Not adding more, no, inshallah, doing less as best as we can, right? We don't add more because it becomes innovation as neutral. That's what we discussed, was it yesterday with the sisters? Can't remember how the one person wanted to um to to pray for the whole night. One person want without sleeping, right? One person wanted to fast every day. Um, one person did not want to marry because he wanted to focus on the deen. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi addressed them one by one, right? I fast. And I don't fast, and other days, I I I pray at night and I sleep during the same night, and I marry those who do not follow me. It's not one of me. So, doing more things than the Prophet Muhammad Sallam does not mean that you're better in terms of your deed, but in fact you are doing worse because you are innovating things, right? So, we just need to stick to Prophet Muhammad Sallam, right, and his ways in order, inshallah, to get closer to Allah, right? Um. And in on in order for, in according to this verse, Rah number three, verse number thirty-one, in order to get all gain Allah's love and to get His forgiveness, inshallah, right? Um, in terms of the Quran, so in terms of our relationship with Allah, do I read the Quran? Um, every day, some of us think, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time to read the Quran because, well, you know, Ramadan is not here, right? Ramadan comes and I read the Quran. It's completely nonsense, right? The Quran is a guidance. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه دل للمتقين. سورة نمبر 2 verse number 2. This is a book. There's no doubt about it. It's a guidance for those with taqwa who are God conscious, right? And not just reading. We need to understand. Is it true? That's why when when whenever we discuss, we have a tafsir classes. We have when all these classes, we always well this discussion. What does all all mean by this, right? How do we re react to to situations like this, right? We talked about Musa just now about Yusuf alayhi salam. Imagine you were, you were with him in prison, right? What is your impression of him? How should you react? Because at the end of the day, it's only Allah who judge, not you, right? Um, so these are the things in which you and I, we must really understand um, about your relationship with Allah. And this is beautiful hadith, right? From Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah, who said, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah says, right? Whoever takes a close friend of mine as an enemy, I declare war on him. Right? Subhanallah. So, if if you are in Allah's good list, good book, whoever takes takes you as uh, as as the enemy, Allah will declare war on that person. Subhanallah. Because you you are being loved by Allah. Right? The hadith continues. My slave does not draw closer to me. By anything more beloved to me than that which I have made obligatory upon him, and my slave continues to draw closer to me by doing uh, the nafil or super superregatory or voluntary deeds until I love him, and if I love him, I will be his hearing with which he hears, his vision with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his foot with which he walks. If he were to ask me, I would surely give it to him. If he were to seek refuge with me. I would surely grant him refuge. I do not hesitate about anything that I want to do as I hesitate to take the soul of a believer for he hates death and I hate to hurt him. All right? This is a, a bit a more longer version than the one which I discussed just now about how Allah will love us when we do more voluntary deeds. Okay. Um, another hadith from, from Ibn Majah, right? Um, This person was asking, I said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, right? Which people are the most severely tested? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the prophets, 
Then the next best and the next best, a person is tested according to his religious commitment. If he is steadfast in his religious commitment, he will be tested more severely. And if he is frail in his religious commitment, his test will be according to his commitment. Trials will continue to aff afflict a person until they have him walking on the earth with no sin on him. Right? This is a nice hadith to, to make you and I understand. Right? When we are tested by Allah, right? It doesn't mean Allah doesn't love us. Perhaps Allah wants us to be patient. Perhaps Allah has a better plan for us, right? And this is when, when we are patient, inshallah, this is re to remove our sins so much so that when we, at the end of our, la of our last breath, we have completely no sin on us. And this is beautiful, subhanAllah, right? That was why, I think that was the hadith when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was approached by this woman, right? This woman always had epilepsy. When, when she had epileptic fit, she would be naked. Because when you have epilepsy, you can't control everything, right? So the clothes will be naked. So he went to Prophet Muhammad to ask him to, can you help me to get rid of this illness? Prophet Muhammad asked her, do you, do you, if, if you are patient with this, the reward is Jannah. Or you want me to ask Allah to remove this from you today? So she thought about it. And she said that, well, I want Jannah. But can you make dua to Allah that if I have epileptic fit, ask Allah not to make me naked. And this is beautiful, right? Because it clearly shows that um, the things that we suffered in terms of illnesses, in terms of Allah's test, it is to, inshallah, to make us closer to Allah, if you are patient, of course, right? We don't let shaitan come into us and say, oh, look at this. You pray to Allah, you do, you are so nice to the to the poor, yet you look at your state, you're still poor, right? You don't have much money, right? You suffered from illnesses, right? What is this, right? So my nose will not pray because Allah's not answering your dua. So this is how shaitan is always or shaitan always coming to you and me in order to make us become angry with Allah, then we would uh, stop making dua. Yeah. So always remember, yeah. Um we surprise this. Which which means verily with hardship there is relief and with hardship there is relief. We surprise this. Surah Shah. Sorry? Alam Nashrah Lakasadra. Yes. Surah number? Aye. Ninety-four, is it Ashahar, right? Ninety-four, right? In verse number, I think, let me look at it, six and five and six, right? So, with every hardship, there's relief. Okay, so don't be sad if Allah tests us, tests you, tests me, right? Because it's, there's always, um, as a believer, you need to understand this, right? That Allah's test will always, inshallah, bring so much reward if you are patient, inshallah, right? Um, so this is the number two things we must do is to assess our relationship with Allah. Relationship, right? And you and I know that if Allah loves us, He will grant us what we want. Yeah. But of course, right? When Allah knows our weaknesses, all of us have different weaknesses, right? People are weak with women, weakness with money, right? And when Allah knows that if we are weak with money and we got more money, that it will make us more forgetful with Allah, then Allah will give us less money, isn't it true? Right? Um, so do remember this, right? Number three, etiquette of making dua, right? So we discussed before many times, it's not just about, oh Allah, grant me this dua, grant me this, grant me that, right? That there is a way to ask uh, Allah for things, right? Um, there's a hadith from Tarmidhi, right? Where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, was sitting and a man came in and prayed and said, oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me. The Prophet Muhammad said, you have been too hasty, O worshipper. When you have prayed and are sitting, praise Allah as he deserves to be praised and send blessings upon me and then call upon him. Right? So there's a few narrations similar to this. Right? So basically, what we must do is that there's an etiquette. Because, for example, if I want something from Ayman, I was say, Ayman, you're right, you're so amazing. You come to my classes, right? You have so much knowledge. You, you know, you are so generous, all this. Can I, can you give me 100 pounds, right? So you, you give compliment first, right? 
then you ask for something, right? Other than, can you give me this, right? It, it, that is not the etiquette. So Allah himself, we understood from Prophet Muhammad SAW because he has been sent to us to show us the best way to worship Allah, isn't it true? So first of all, we do need to praise Allah, right? So let's say you finish your salam, sal your, your praise, uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, we might make dua to Allah, for example. You cannot just, just say, Ya Allah, give me this. You cannot even just say the words of Allah, Rabbana atna fi dunna. No, you must start with something first, isn't it true? So first of all, you need to praise Allah, right? So what can you say? Brothers? Can say anything, right? Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, right? Say anything, right? You can say to praise Allah. Second thing, you need to send blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? We know from hadith that if a person is not doing this hadith, a thing is from Tabarani, right? Class as Sahib al-Albani, right? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that every dua is kept back until you send blessings upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? That means it's suspended. It doesn't read to Allah, right? So you can say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad, yeah? Or Ya Allah, send a peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? In your own language, right? If you do not know the Arabic, right? So after you 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 praise Allah, you send blessings upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? The next one, ask for forgiveness from Allah, right? You can use the best dua of forgiveness for this etiquette is. The dua of, for example, dua Yunus know, in the hadith from Tarmidhi, right? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the dua of Dhul Anun, yeah, Dhul Dhul Anun, which is a uh, Yusuf alaihi salam, which he invoked Allah from the inside the belly of the whale, um, is um, no Muslims ever make from this dua by it, but Allah will grant it, right? In the hadith from At Tarmidhi. What is the dua of, of Yunus alayhi salam? Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right. We surah this, Ayman. Uh, surah Al Anbiya, uh, either 81 or 84. Or something no. like that. 80, what? Uh, like between, in the 80s, isn't it? <laughs> uh, 2187, right? Ah, you see, I was the almost there. And and subhanallah, if you know the 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 the, the dua is la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal dhalimin, which means none has right to be worshipped but you. Um, glorified are you? Truly, I've been among the wrongdoers. Isn't it true? Right. And when if you read the tafsir, when when you know Salah Islam make this one in the belly of the whale, right? You know he made this mistake, big mistake of abandoning his people, right? And Allah punished him by. Uh, uh, making the whale swallow him, right? Um, and when he made this dua, the angels actually went to Allah and asked Allah, aren't you going to answer the dua of your righteous slave? And perhaps when we make this same dua, Allah would answer the rest of our dua, subhanAllah, right? So this is one of the best dua um, to to say, yeah, because according to this hadith from at tarmidhi right? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, no Muslim, no Muslim ever makes dua by it, but Allah will grant it, right? So we make this dua. You can say any dua of forgiveness. You can just say Astaghfirullah, Rabbil Firli. It's up to you. But this is this is one of the best dua to make uh, for seek forgiveness as an etiquette of making dua. Okay. Then you ask Allah by His most beautiful names. As I said just now, when you know Allah's names, for example, is um, Ya Rahman. Uh, uh, sorry, Ar Rahman. When you say, you put the ya means oh, yeah? When you say ya, you, you drop the prefix al, yeah? So do, you don't say ya al ar rahman you say ya rahman, ya rahim, yeah? Ya mujib, yeah? Um, ya hayu, ya qayyum, yeah? Uh, so you don't you don't say ya al hayu, ya, ya al qayyum, yeah? You, you drop the al, right? Just say that name of Allah, right? Of course, what, what is the most important, important name of Allah?
brothers. Would they not just be Allah? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, you just say Ya Allah, right? Because Allah covers everything, isn't it? True. Ya Allah, right? Forgive my sins. Ya Allah, grant in, increase my risk, right? So it's important that we we know the names of Allah, right? Um, so this is the etiquette. I repeat one one more time. The etiquette making dua. Um, praise Allah. Send blessings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, seek forgiveness from Allah. And then ask Allah through His most beautiful names. Okay, questions so far? All right. Now, number four, right? How to make our dua more effective? That you must have yaqeen in your dua. What is yaqeen? Certainty, right? That you, that Allah can answer your dua with His will, right? So that's why you cannot make dua. I, I see people are making mistakes, right? Uh, when they write to me uh, when they, they write something, right? Um, because you cannot say, um, is this a hadith, for example? Uh, you cannot say, oh Allah, forgive me if you will, inshallah, right? So when you say, uh, may Allah increase my iman, right? You're making dua. So you cannot say, may Allah increase my iman, inshallah. No, you can't say that. Just say, may Allah increase my iman, full stop. This is shows that you have yaqeed that Allah will do it, right? Um, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi reminded us right, in hadith from uh, Tarmidhi, call upon Allah when you are certain of a response and remember that Allah will not answer a dua that comes from a negligent and heedless heart, right? So you know everything, there's nothing that Allah cannot answer. That's not for me personally, right? If I have problems, all I need to do, inshallah, will ask for his forgiveness, of course. It may be my fault, right? And that's it. Just work towards the problems. I, I cannot ask Allah to resolve my problems if, if I don't work on it. Isn't it true? So if I have problems with my clients, right, then I need to work on my clients. I cannot just sit down and then lay on the bed and expect things to happen. I need to make sure I, I resolve the issues myself. And again, after that, tawakkal to Allah, trust Allah, Allah will help me. And this is very important to have this yaqeen. Yeah, Allah will answer the dua as best as, uh, as as well as much as we are concerned. Allah will do it. Whether Allah will want to test me more is a different story, right? Allah may want to prolong my issues. So I'm more, um, I'm more humble to Him. I'm more able to do my acts of worship properly, right? Because I have this problem. That's another story, right? But we must have certain that Allah can answer any dua. Questions? Right. The next one is to beseech and humbling oneself, hoping for Allah's reward and fearing his punishment. Right. Um, so, for example, in surah number 7, verse number 55, right? 755. Yep. Yeah. Allah reminded us, right? Udu'un rabbakum right invoke your lot with humility and in secret he do not he does not like the aggressors so what does it mean we must ask Allah with humility in secret I mean I myself once in a while after making dua just making I was just sitting down here and making dua to Allah but I remind myself, my God, Allah asked me to do with hum with humility. So I need to really look as if I'm asking our master. We are his, his slave. We are nothing but his slave. But as a slave of Allah, we must ask Allah with humility, right? And in secret, right? Not sure why people like to do dua in congregations and all this, because the dua of the imam and my dua is different. Secondly, it's, that it's not legislated by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? After salah, you should make dua individually, not in, in unison and all this, and saying, I mean, when you don't understand what the imam is trying to say. I remember, right, in, um, I may have discussed with you, for example, um, in one of the dua of uh, Ramadan, right, actually the imam was saying something like, uh, Ya Allah, we have sinned so much. What did the people say? I mean, like, you know, you don't even understand the dua, right? And you just say, I mean, when the Imam was actually saying something that, that to confess to all that we have seen so much, right? So we do need to understand that everybody has their own different dua that you can make yourself. 
I can, yeah, you should do yourself, right? Um, so do be aware of this, that when you make dua as according to the surah number seven, verse number 55, right? Um, you do need to make dua uh, in secret, inshallah, and in humility. In the same surah, I think, right? In verse number, I think, 205, if I'm not mistaken, right? Two verse number 205, Allah informed us, um, وَذَكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْعُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And remember your Lord within yourself, humbly and with fear and without loudness in words, in the mornings and the afternoons, and be not of those who are neglectful. People are just, if you don't believe me, if you have been to Umrah before, right? People are just making dua, follow, following following the imams, right? Uh, let's say they're doing tawaf, right? The leader will say something, just say, I mean, I mean, I mean. You, you are neglectful because you do not know even the meaning, right? And the hadith behind this was when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think he was, he was with the companions, right? Um, traveling. And they was shouting very loud, Allah Akbar, something like that, right? Glorifying Allah and all this. And he literally tell the companions to chill. Because he said, you're not asking from somebody who is deaf. Allah is um, a samir, the all hearer, right? So we do need to be humble and you need to be uh, um, saying, uh, according to, even to this verse, right? 205, right? To to be uh, making dua to Allah without any loudness. There's nothing to show off to people that we are pious when making dua. Right? It's between us and Allah. Okay? Number six, to understand that the dua that you're making, very important brothers, um, even though of course Arabic is not our first language, for, for most of us at least, I'm sure brother Karim is different, right? He's from Egypt, he knows Arabic very well, right? But for most of us, right? Iman, of course, knows Arabic, right? For most of us, Arabic is not our first language, but we do need to know the meaning, right? It's a huge thing when we say even Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. It's a huge meaning that we praise Allah. Who is Allah? He's, he's the Rabbul Alamin. He's the one who creates, maintains, sustains, right? Um, of all his creations. And when, when we say this all the time, right? How can we ask from the deceased? How can we ask from others? When we know that we declare that is Allah's Rabbil, Al Rabbil Alameen, right? So when we understand what we are making, the dua, right, to Allah, or when we praise Allah, it makes a lot of difference in our dua, right? And number seven, to say the dua silently, as we discussed just now, right? In Surah 7, verse number 55, Allah said, Invoke your Lord with humility and in secret. Number eight, do not be hasty that your dua, for your dua to be answered, right? Um... In the hadith from Bukhari and Muslim, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the dua of any one of you will be answered as so long as he is not impatient and he says, I made dua, but it was not answered. Because when you say this, shaitan always comes to you and, and oh, don't make dua. For what? He's not answering your dua anyway, right? Don't be hasty. Remember, uh, was it Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam who made dua that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would send to us a prophet to teach us? It was answered only, what, 2,000 years later at least. Right, so do be patient about your dua. Right, next one, number nine, is to repeat the dua more than once. It is the sunnah, right? Prophet says it's better, it, the best is to repeat this about three times, inshallah, in the hadith. Number 10, yeah, make dua at specific times. What is the best time to make dua, brothers? For example, uh, last day of the night and last yep. hour of Friday, isn't it? Yes, it's, the, the, so the, in, in my notes, I'm going to give it to you, inshallah, but more than 30 times, 30 different occasions to make dua. Last of the night, because Allah is at the lowest heaven, and he said in Hadith Qudsi, right? Who is calling on me so that I may answer him? Who is asking me so that I may grant him? Who is seeking my forgiveness from me so that I may forgive him, right? Hadith Qudsi is authentic, inshallah. This Hadith, everybody knows this, right? 
Um, another one is also late at night. This is another hadith, right? B different from this, the first one lasted at night. We do not know which part of the night is this, right? Prophet Muhammad said, there is, an, there is at night an hour. No Muslim happens to be asking Allah any matter of this world or the hereafter except that he will be given it. And this occurs every night. Hadith by Muslim, right? Um, as the bro uh, brother, was it Ayman said, right? An hour on a Friday, according to many scholars, the hour is one hour before Maghrib. So that's why we always remind each other, don't forget, before, Mag before Maghrib, on, uh, that means on that Friday, right? Let's say Maghrib now is about 404, right? So 304, make dua, right? Um, on a Friday, right? Because once after Maghrib, it will be Saturday in Islamic terms, okay? Between Adhan and Iqamah, this is very important. No? A lot of people within Adhan and Iqamah are so busy with their mobile phone, isn't it true, right? Uh, checking checking all the, who likes your messages, right? Taking all these likes, oh, I like this and this. But you, you should know this hadith, a supplication made between Adhan and Iqamah is not rejected, right? Hadith from Ahmad, Abu Dawood, and Tarmidhi, right? So this is important that we, uh, inshallah, uh, use the, this time as the best time to make dua between Adhan and Iqama, right? Um, another one, for example, while, while prostrating, of course, right? Prophet Muhammad SAW said in the hadith uh, from Muslim Abu Dawud, uh, Anasai is authentic, inshallah, that the nearest a slave can be to his Lord is when he is prostrating, so invoke to Allah. So, you know, in prostration, when, if especially when I do alone in my tahajjud, I do long prostrations, right? After I say subhanahu wa ta'ala, in your own language or in Arabic, it's up to you, right? Um, you can make dua to Allah as much as possible. Okay? Many, many things. So, um, do doing rain, right? Um, so, a uh, traveler, for example, right? There are about at least, I think about, how many? About 25 to 30 at least, right? Um, so, do take note of this, inshallah, okay? The next last, we're going to end inshallah soon, right? Um, the next one, uh, specific, uh, specific dua for specific occasions, right? So make sure you, when you ask for forgiveness, right? Make sure you make a dua in relation to your forgiveness, of course, right? You don't need, you don't make dua for risk or provisions when you're asking for give forgiveness. So you make, make sure you uh, direct the specific dua for specific occasions, right? Other things, Facing the Qibla, right, it is not important, but it is, it helps because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think he made dua, um, I think before the Battle of Badr, right, he made dua to Allah, because as you know, in the Battle of Badr, how many Muslims were there? Brothers? How many Muslims in the Battle of Badr? About, I think 300, right? Or 300, 300, 300, right? 313, yes. Yes. And uh, how many disbelievers were there? Quraysh, there were about 1,000. Uh, 1, so one is a three, right? In that, on that occasion, Muhammad SAW made a dua to Allah and he faced the Qibla. And he was crying loud. Yeah. Um, so this is hadith, is authentic, inshallah. So uh, for Muslim, right? So it is important that we face the Qibla, if you can, of course, if you know where the Qibla is, right? Another one is having wudu, right? I mean, for me personally, if you want to read the Quran, even though we are just reading Quran, I would like to do my wudu, right? Because we need to be in a I want to be in my purified state. Even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he went, he was in the toilet and somebody greeted him with salam. He didn't answer the salam. It was because he had he did not have his wudu, and he want whenever he mentioned Allah's name, he wanted to be in wudu in in a purified state, right? Um, so this is important that we understand this, right? Um, crying, right? Don't be very macho and say, "Oh, I don't know crying," because because I don't look manly if I were to cry. Crying is amazing, right? Because it shows our sincerity, isn't it true, right? Um, we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also cried yeah, when um, there is a beautiful, I've just read to you this this this, this meaning um, of the hadith, right? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making dua first of all through uh, the dua in Surah number 14, verse number 36, which means, Oh my Lord, they have indeed led astray many, many among mankind, 
He then who follows my ways is of me. And he was reciting surah uh, number, I think, five verses of 118 of Isa alayhi salam saying, if you punish them, then they are your servants. If you forgive them, verily you are the exalted, the wise. Then Prophet Muhammad raised up his hands and he said, Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah, my nations, my nations. And Allah, of course, knows the meaning, uh, knows, knows his intention. Allah said to Jibril, Oh Jibril, go to Muhammad and your Lord knows better and ask him what makes him cry. Jibril, Jibril came to Prophet Muhammad and asked him. The Prophet told him about the, his concern about you and me, about his ummah. Right? Jibril returned to Allah informed him, well, Allah knows everything, of course, and Allah said, oh, Jibril, go to Muhammad and tell him that we shall please you concerning your ummah and shall not cause you to be unhappy. The Muslims are beautiful. Brothers, our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is so concerned with you and me. For sure, if not, he will be crying. And Allah answered his dua and said, tell him, right? that you will not be unhappy when you see the results in the hereafter of your ummah. We make dua, we are among those people, right? Whom Allah will be pleased with, right? Raising our hands, right? We know from a hadith that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that your Lord is kind and most generous and he is too kind to let his slaves, if he raise his hands, uh, to bring them back empty, right? Hadith uh, by uh, class Sahih by Sheikh Albani. Um, so you can raise up your hands. It should be together, right? It's not separated together when you make a dua. Unless you're so desperate, you separate it up and and until you can show your this part here. This is where people saw that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he invoked Allah for rain, he would do this. Other than that, close like this, right? So it, it would allow Allah to, for example, to to feel shy because you are so humble, you are so sincere to Allah would feel shy to not answer your dua. But always remember brothers, um, this is my opinion of course, right? You only raise up your hands for me personally on occasion, occasionally, right? You never seen a hadith when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said after or even when companions reported when we see after every prayer, we saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu raise up the hands when he make and he make dua. We never say 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 this see this hadith, right? That means you don't always raise up the hands when making dua, right? We never see so another hadith when okay after the after the because it will be reported for sure, right? After the Prophet made a wudu, he make dua by raising his hands. We never see the hadith. Right? What is the dua of wudu? For example, you say your shahada ra shadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa shadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasuluh. If you say this dua, all the eight gates of Jannah will open for us and we can enter from any gate. Right? Remember the hadith? But we never seen the hadith or we never read in the narrations of Muhammad SAW would raise up his hands. Right? Or when, when the, the Prophet leave the house, right? When he, what is the dua of leaving the house, brothers? Bismillahi, tawakkal tu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Isn't it true? Right? It's a dua, right? If the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised up his hands, it would be recorded for sure, but he didn't. So you don't need to raise up your hands all the time, especially uh, for me, I would do it occasionally. When when I say my salam, I want to do dua. Well, sometimes I raise up my hand, I don't raise up the hand sometimes, right? Because I don't want to make an innovation, right? But on occasions where he did, do so, I will follow it. So, for example, before we sleep, right, when we recite the three calls, he would raise up his hands, recite the three calls, and he would uh, wipe the body all over the body. Isn't it true? And I do that. In Umrah, in certain cases, when you are uh, a Hajj, for example, when you throw the stones, you go to the side, you make, you raise up the hands, and it, we, we we know it's recorded, right? So always remember this: raising raising up the hands, it is important, but you n must not do it all the time. Okay, um, that's it for today. I hope today's talk is useful. Any questions, brothers, before we end? No, no. Um, from, from my side, everything is clear. So, Alhamdulillah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to 
grant us his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, grant us our du'a as best as he think that we should be granted the du'a. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us patience if our du'a is not answered. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins and shortcomings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us a beautiful place in Jannah Atul Firdaus. Subhanallah wa bihamdika ashadu ala ila anta. Wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ila subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzata ma yusifun. Wa assalamu ala al-mursalin. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakum al-khair. InsyaAllah we'll see you for our next talk next week. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.